Hey there, this video is all about the Viltrox 24 millimeter f1.8 lens for Sony E-mount. And full disclosure, Viltrox sent me this lens to test out and make a review, but they didn't pay me anything and they don't get to see this review before it goes out, so the opinion is my own. Now, 24 millimeters is one of my favorite focal lengths. I generally am shooting myself between 20 and 24 millimeters when I'm outside because I like to see more of the background. Now, what's really unique about this is that it opens up to a maximum aperture of f1.8. Now, generally, I'm shooting on zoom lenses, which mostly open up to 2.8, so having a Aperture that opens up to 1.8 is really cool. It gives you a really unique perspective. And of course, this is a full frame lens and I'm shooting this on the FX3. So why is it so cool? Well, having the ability to shoot wide with a shallow depth of field is really cool. And that's why this look I think is really neat. And it's a great um, lens to have in your bag for a bunch of reasons. First of all, 24 millimeters is kind of at the wide end where you don't get so much distortion. So what you're looking at here, even if I move close, you know, generally if you're shooting on a wide lens, you'll see like people's noses and stuff look weird. And also you'll start to see their arms stretch out at the corners of the frame. But generally like this lens does look pretty solid. I don't see too much distortion. And the best thing about this lens is the price. And I, I wanna mention that kind of up front because I think that kind of di dictates a lot of the conversation. This lens goes for $380. So if you're looking for a fairly inexpensive lens that you can throw in your bag versus some of the more expensive Sony options, like the Sony 24 millimeter G Master is a lot more expensive, this is a great option. Or if you're just looking to dabble in prime lenses for the first time, a 24 is a great one to have in your kit and one that I've had plenty of times in the past. And it's so versatile because having that wide and shallow look or or if you're shooting in low light, you can open up to f1.8. The other thing is if you're shooting on Super 35, this would be like a 36 millimeter, or if you're on like the a7 IV and you have a crop mode or you're using clear image zoom. So this would be around 35 millimeter equivalent here using the clear image zoom on the FX3. So a lot of great options for this lens. Uh, it's a great focal length to, to add into your kit. Now, of course, I wanna show you some sample footage and do, go through some normal tests that I would do for any lens. And so for this, I actually wanna show you a video that I shot with this last week. I shot a vlog for my farming channel, which if you don't know, I have another channel about small scale sustainable farming. And instead of just doing some standard test shots with this, I thought it would be cooler to actually just use it for a whole vlog. So here's a little section of that video so you can check out the image quality. Overall, I was pretty happy with the performance of this lens and I wanna talk about some of its limitations because you don't get anything for free, right? This is a $380 lens and personally for me, I'm often shooting on very expensive lenses like G Master lenses or Canon L series lenses, but it's nice to be able to sometimes throw a inexpensive um, prime lens on your camera, get a different look or keep the kit really small and light. Like this is a great one that I would probably take hiking with me or vlogging because of the focal length and having the ability to go between 24 and 36. It's absolutely awesome. So a couple things I noticed was uh, one shot that I had at the beginning of this video, I was heavily backlit just to try to push the lens a little bit harder and it definitely kind of got washed out and I lost a lot of contrast. Now I did try to fix as best as possible in post, but it's one of those things where when you're comparing lenses that you're like this lens with a very expensive lens, there's differences in the coatings and stuff like that. And you know, there are some limitations there. Now, the other thing I want to talk about is autofocus. I did have an instance during this vlog where I, it was losing focus a little bit. And this clip here, when I was talking to my buddy, you could see it sort of hunting around a little bit and it was a little bit bothersome to me. So I want to test it out a little bit more. We'll do some autofocus tests here. We'll test it at F1.8 to really try to push the lens as hard as possible. And then I want to test it at 2.8 and compare it with the G Master, the 24 to 70 uh, G Master Mark II at 24 millimeters in F2.8. So let's take a look.
One last thing I wanna test here is focus breathing, which of course is important for videographers. And if you're not sure what that is, is when it changes focus in frame, it'll actually zoom and change the focal length. And the way you see that is by looking at the edges of the frame and see if they're coming in or out as it changes focus. So let's give that a quick test. All right, let's go inside and I'll show you what the lens looks like and talk about some of its features and then give you my final thoughts on it. I'm inside now and I wanna talk about some of the results of the test I did outside. And before I get into that, I, again, I just wanna put this in perspective. This lens is currently selling for $380 and I was comparing it with a $2,300 lens. So that's like six times the price. So I, you gotta keep that in mind when I'm making these comparisons. Now, in terms of image quality, I think that Viltrox holds up pretty well. Uh, I think it's decently sharp. Again, you know, you saw in that vlog what it could do. That was all shot with manual, most of that was shot with manual focus, but uh, I think it looked pretty well. It graded really nice. Uh, the colors were rendered really well besides the, uh, the backlighting situation, which I already talked about. And in terms of comparing the lens wide open, I think it definitely falls a little bit short at f1.8 compared to let's say f2.8. So even in that autofocus comparison, you can look at the background there and you can see that there's some chromatic aberrations. So some purple fringing. But again, like it's kind of expected out of a lens like this, it's not gonna be optically perfect, especially wide open. So if you want something a little bit sharper, a little more accurate, I probably should stop down just a little bit. But you do have that option to open up to f1.8 if you want a really blurry background, or again, if you're shooting in low light. In terms of autofocus, I think it does okay. It's not exceptional. Again, comparing it with a very expensive lens, it's not gonna do as well. But again, during that vlog, I definitely lost focus a couple times and uh, that was kind of annoying. But what I did notice was the FX3 was definitely, identifying the face and the eye. It just seemed to be a little bit slower to grab focus and hold it. So again, it does okay. Now let's get on talking about the build quality of this lens. And this is something where the lens really does shine. I think it feels unbelievable. It is an all metal build and it feels great in the hands. The focus ring is really, really nice. It's big, it's easy to grab. It's got some resistance, but it's very, very smooth. I love it. It has the aperture ring on here, which you probably know from previous videos of mine that I'm not a big fan of these on the lenses because I bump them a lot and this doesn't have a lock. So generally I just leave it on the A position and then control it with the camera. But if you want to, you can turn this. It doesn't have a click, so it's nice for video shooting, but it does have a little bit of a click when it goes into the A position. But again, I have bumped it quite a few times. In the back, you have a metal lens mount which is nice, but no weather sealing. And then on the front, what I wanna point out is that it has a 55 millimeter filter thread, which is on the small side. And the reason that I bring that up is that if you are using ND filters, this can be a little bit of a challenge. Now, I always recommend people get the largest ND filter that you possibly need. So for me, I always invest in 82 millimeter filters because they'll fit my largest lenses and then you just use step-up rings. Now, I often use this series of step-up rings, which is, you know, you can unscrew them, screw them together to go from anything to anything. So this one goes from 55 up to 82, which works on this. But when I put this on the lens with the ND filter, because the lens is so wide, it's a you know, if a 24 millimeter lens and has a 55 millimeter filter thread, I need all these adapters. And when I put the filter on, it was catching the edge of the adapter and vignetting it or blocking it. So what I had to do was get a, a special adapter that's just a straight up 55 to 82. That brings the filter much closer and I didn't have those issues. So keep that in mind about filters because it's such a small filter thread on it that um, if you have much larger filters, you're gonna need the, a specific adapter or maybe a smaller filter size. Now let's get on talking about who this lens is for. And I think it's for a lot of people. And I think partially it's because the price makes this so accessible. Now, if you're just getting into full frame, you know how expensive the lenses can be and it can be hard, especially if you've just dropped a good amount of money on a full frame camera. I think this is also great for people that may be more on a budget. So maybe you have one of the more entry level Sony full frame cameras, maybe you're shooting on an A7 III or an A7C, A7 IV even. But it goes to, say, it goes to show I, I, I am gonna use this occasionally on my FX3. So um, you, know, you can use it on any of the Sony full frame cameras and you can also use it on their APS-C cameras as well. So I think, as I said, it's, it's a great option if you're more on a budget or you're looking to just try out this focal length, maybe you're into photography as well. Finding a lens like this for the price that opens up to f1.8, I think is pretty special. If you compare this with the other lenses on the market, like the Sony G Master, I think is 13 or $1,400. That's the f1.4 version. There's also a couple lenses from Sigma, one of their newest ones, the contemporary lens, I think is like $640, the f2 version. So there are some other ones out there, but I think this definitely packs a lot of value into, into this little lens. So I think if you are looking for the ultimate image quality, 
quality of a 24 millimeter prime for Sony, you're probably gonna go for the G Master. But again, if you're looking to pick up a lens or two and try it out, or you want something small and light and inexpensive, this is a great option. I'll definitely be using this on the FX3 for some vlogging and hiking, like I mentioned before. It's a great option and having F1.8 is definitely fun when you're used to shooting at F2.8. So. I think it's a really cool lens. Uh, I really want to thank Viltrox for sending this to me. Hopefully, uh, you give it a give it a look if you're interested. And uh, there'll be links down below, and those are affiliate links. So if you click on those, they help the channel, and they don't cost you anything else. There's also links down below for all the other gear that I use. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting subscribe down below. That would be greatly appreciated. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.